Now the first bad thing of the day. Right. Get a punt blocked here for a touchdown. Uh, you know, number four, I think, for them set some type of uh, career record. Uh, oh, sure. His day. best day of his life, I'm right. sure. Uh, Did you figure out what it was? Was it a blocking scheme? Was it... Uh, Right, uh, they, they ran a they ran a six man overload uh, on this, and, and basically, uh, anytime somebody's going to overload, you're going to turn the outside man free uh, on that, and then it becomes down to a point he's where got the speed to get to the ball. Uh, you, well, you've got to have enough uh, width so he's far enough away. Uh, this is a kickoff return here by Victor Barnes. Another one. This one, uh, you know, you, you go from being mad to happy because the the, the sun was. Uh, uh, in our return people's eyes, Aaron Vactor uh, loses the ball so he doesn't catch it, which scares you to death on a kickoff return, and uh, Victor comes in front of him and picks the ball up and uh, runs for the touchdown. And it was on the third kickoff. The, the young man had kicked out of bounds twice, so they were penalized back. So uh, finally, we were, we were right back in the ball game. You know, we're, you know you're down after that punt block, uh, your kickoff return. Uh, the kids are out there, uh, you know, playing hard again. Uh, uh, they come out and uh, uh, as far as up the defense again. Yeah, right away, and it's it's a one we get real good coverage. Just one of the you know if you're looking for uh, little things, uh, we had some young kids, uh, redshirt freshmen uh, that started to do a pretty good job on our, our kickoff coverage team. Uh, I was telling them yesterday it's nice to take them along now, and they're not just uh, uh, somebody that's going to ride, eat, and warm up. Uh, they're actually contributing to us. There's another play in there by Rick Rowe. Uh, coming back, you know, he had missed about four weeks. Had a pretty good game last week uh, uh, from it. This is a, this is something that I thought about as we watch more of this uh, series where you guys hold them. Freshmen come in, maybe they're not ready to play college football. All of a sudden, they're thrust into the game and they got to play and they got to contribute. That's got to be something tough to get used to. Well, it is, and, and the speed of everything. Everything happens a little bit faster and a little bit quicker. There was another third down play. Uh, Chris Bantner uh, makes a nice play on this. Uh, uh, they have to punt again. Uh, we get the ball uh, uh, back and. Uh, Get a little bit of heat on Paul there on a the blitz. We're really lucky, uh, you know, this guy didn't intercept it and uh, walk in with it. Now we have to punt again. And again, uh, you know, just some fundamentals on this type of thing. Uh, uh, we realize the guy's going to be loose on the outside, but we have to turn away from the, uh, the pressure also. The punter does, and uh, obviously you can't take uh, quite that many steps and turn the ball around three times also. So, you know, it's a combination of things, and uh, basically it gets back to uh, uh, coaching. We've got to, got to get them ready for those situations so, so they don't happen. We're down 14-7. Come right back here again. Paul throws the ball out to William Thomas. Uh, for a nice gain of 18 yards. We got the bad things out of the way, though, huh? Well, again, you know, but it's you're sort of on an emotional uh, roller coaster. Yeah. Uh, you know, you block a punt, you're down. I come right back, we run a kickoff in, uh, we're back in it, then we have a block punt again. Uh, but again, uh, you know, defense is still playing hard, and uh, the offense, uh, believe it or not, uh, w was executing uh, pretty well on, on this type. There's Chris Banner again for a uh, tackle for a loss of two yards. Glad to see him had a good he had a good game. Right. For you. Okay, we're going to the three-man rush here, and we get a sack uh, with uh, Rich Luter and Paul Storbeck. Uh, okay, this is most pressure I think Northern Colorado's had on their passing game uh, the whole time. Now, it's sort of deceiving. The kid completed 11 passes in a row one time uh, from it, but a lot of them were that five, six-yard pass that didn't get him the first down either. He was very good at hitting his uh, open receivers. This is Andy Bruckner. Always kid Andy that he sort of slows him to death uh, on his punt <laughs> returns, but say, he does a great job and he runs upfield and, and really got us into position there. 41 yard return uh, uh, on that punt. We watched him uh, in practice this fall. Uh, we thought he'd be a good player for him. Okay, they come out, run the option again there, and uh, uh, Kirk Coleman gets a nice scrape on, on that play. Now, he, he was playing very, very hard uh, uh, from it. They come back, throw the ball there, uh, broken up by Corey Barr. Uh, we were telling him it was an inter interception broken up from, uh, <laughs> from it. But, you know, he's in the right spot, made a great drop, and, and he's playing a new position also this year. We come back here and get him, uh, you might say, is a lucky break. Uh, they tip the ball, we catch it. We had the first down, then Victor decided to get a few more yards, and we go back and we don't get the first down. So Victor ran backwards a little bit. That's effort, though. You can't fault effort. No. Sometimes we get some breaks and we say, you know, no thank you, we don't want one. <laughs> This is Hurley up the middle, and uh, fumble recovered by UNO. Right. Uh, we uh, Rodney Bradley comes in, and you know again we got this is something we haven't had in a lot of games. So we're, we're in pretty good field position. 
Uh, Paul comes up and hits William Thomas with a nice uh, pass there across the middle for nine yards. We got a third and six. Tough play here. We ran a sweep. They ran a blitz, which we wanted to see, and we just took our eye off the ball, and uh, uh, we fumble it there. Uh, we come back. We got our fourth and 14, which is, is a tough play, and uh, uh, they got a little heat on us, and we overthrew it uh, from that. So they get the ball back. Uh, they hit a, a tight end. Uh, Wayne Wright, who's probably the top tight end in, in the conference. Uh, they think he's a real uh, pro football prospect. Hit him with a bootleg. Uh, they throw it deep, uh, you know, one of these jump ball plays down the line right there. Uh, you know, we're there, we don't make a play on it. Uh, we thought the guy was out of bounds, but obviously, uh, uh, you know, he wasn't on that. Uh, they hit another little pass out here in the flat. Good tackle. Right. You know, they, they put a they put a nice drive. Uh, this is the first drive they've been able to mount the, the whole time uh, for it. And they come in here and they uh, score up over the top on it. That happens so often. You know, a, a big a drive of your own gets stalled or stopped and, and you, you turn the ball over to them and then wham, they march right down the field on you. I don't know if it's a lack of emotion or concentration. I or think purpose. concentration lacks sometimes and, uh, you know, then you don't make some plays. Here's Paul Check rolling out uh, on a bootleg for a first down. And then he makes a completion here to Hill. Right, he hits uh, Eric. The problem is, you know, we're running on a third and eight, and they, uh, they got some heat on us, and we had to throw a four-yard pattern. So, uh, you know, we're short there, and we have to punt uh, to end the, end the first half. But, you you know, going in, you had a couple of uh, uh, blocked punts, returned for touchdowns. Otherwise, uh, the ball game's tied up 7-7. you got to be feeling pretty good. What do you... What do you say to the kids at halftime today, on Saturday, you know, you played hard enough to, to play them even, and you're down 21-7. How do you fire them up for the third quarter, Tom? Well, I think the fact, you know, we're looking right now is that can we keep ourselves in position to win ball games? And even at this time, 21-7, uh, 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 you know, I feel if we go out there and uh, can move the ball a couple times, uh, you know, we got a great opportunity. Uh, the big key is, is right in the second half. Uh, they're a good team. Uh, they've come back and uh, beat a good team like North Dakota a week ago. Uh, you know teams are going to come out that second half, and it's normally, you know, who can withstand the, the charge of the other one uh, right away. And so, you know, I, I thought this week also, uh, during practice, our, our kids, uh, I thought, focused in very well on what they had to do. Uh, here's a team that's, you know, playing very well. Uh, Still's got an outside chance at uh, being a playoff uh, uh, team. And uh, uh, we wanted to go out and hopefully play uh, a physical brand of football. Let's probably. go into the second half highlights now. You do exactly that. The team that comes out takes charge at the beginning of the third quarter. You know, that's what you want the guys to do. And they come out on defense at the beginning of the third quarter and, and hold uh, Northern Colorado and then turn around and score. Right. Let's, we'll pick it up at the kickoff. I'll tell you what, we start out right here, and I, I thought this is a key. We got a nice deep uh, kickoff. Our, our coverage uh, uh, was very good uh, on this. He's a block those punts. Isn't right. <laughs> he, and we, we tackle him on, on the 15-yard line. I mean, that's excellent coverage nowadays uh, on this. Uh, Burns carries the ball up inside, and uh, uh, Rick Rowe and Chris Bantner again on, on the stop there for minus one. Uh, he goes back on a third and ten play uh, to pass here and uh, maybe a little mix up, but Jeff Roethlisberger gets a sack there for a minus five. Uh, so it's a, it's another series where it's it's one two three punt for him. Uh, they're back in there uh, and the guy comes up with with the kind of punch you want. He only punts at 17 yards, so we get a, a nice situation here. Uh, pass to Victor Barnes down to the 20 yard line uh, from it. So you know things are I think uh, are, are very positive. Uh, uh, right this. We come up with a fourth and two right here and uh, hit a trap play on a blitz and uh, Roy Napora uh, scores from 19 yards. Feel good for Roy. He's been working hard all season. I thought he was going to leave us there. Uh, <laughs> Run right uh, out of the stadium. <laughs> you know, uh, on it. But uh, again, you got he's a kid that, that gives you 100% all the time and, and it's good to see something uh, like that happen to him. The defense had to feel great coming out, stopping him and, you know, no one the defense was saying to the Northern Colorado offense, hey, you guys scored on a couple of blocked punts. You didn't score on us. Right. And now, all of us, now it turns around and Northern Colorado puts together a drive on you. I tell you, they come right back and, you know, they're, they're a good team, uh, you know, uh, from it. Uh, I think our kids, uh, uh, you know, playing hard again, but they came out and they threw the, the ball exceptionally well uh, in, in this series. And, you know, right here, you get pretty good heat on him and he's able to dump it off and, and get six yards. Uh, he, he was able to not come up with that bad play. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are the things that, uh, you know, we have to try to uh, protect against him. He didn't hurt themselves. That's you know, right. Threw a play action pass right here and, uh, uh, you know, was able. they were able to uh, pick up 26 yards uh, on that one. 
I, I think the tough one right here is though is that uh, we hold them for no gain and then we get a sack of six yards uh, right there close to a fumble yeah. uh, on that one now you get a third and 16 and they break and uh, you know I think we gotta get a little more heat but again this is a jump ball play uh, in, in the end zone, and, and their guy uh, wins a jump ball, and uh, you know maybe some things are going that way. But th those are the things that uh, you know we got to make those plays because uh, we got them where we want them. Yeah, 28-14 after three quarters now, or in the third quarter of play, I should say. Uh, you know this is you know I think we're right back in there. We don't need any more uh, things not to happen, and, and this is the thing too. They sh they kick short. Uh, uh, you know, Jennings is, is trying to make a play happen right there, and we end up fumbling the ball. Uh, right just like there. you said, that fumble two, three minutes ago wasn't a fumble. This fumble is a fumble. Those are the kinds right. of things that happen when you lose a couple of balls. You know, and it's a thing where, you know, Jeff Jennings, it's not because he isn't trying to, to make plays. Uh, uh, we had a blitz on right there, and they hit the back out of the backfield uh, from it. Again, uh, uh, Leachman is... Uh, He's really improved, I felt, as the year has gone on. He's making better decisions uh, from it. Again, this was a, a play to Wayne Wright out there for three yards. It's uh, bootleg. Tough. It's tough. Uh, you know, that you're not going to, if you hold him to three yards, it's probably a heck of a play. They hit the crossing pattern inside. Uh, but again, you know, he's throwing in rhythm right now, and uh, we had gotten good heat on him early. We don't seem to, to get quite as much uh, on him. But there's there's two of his completions, and they're each been for three yards uh, on it. They hit Wainwright again for three yards, you know. So sometimes it's deceiving when somebody completes 11 passes on you. They, they really haven't thrown it downfield. They end up getting a field goal out of this uh, particular one. And I think with their field position, uh, uh, defensively, you still got to be fairly happy uh, with hanging in there. And uh, the way people kick the ball nowadays, three points isn't too bad. This is frustrating, I know, to watch. I can imagine what it's like on the sidelines to see a couple of turnovers and a couple of missed plays and maybe a penalty or a fumble right. make the difference in a ball game. And you know, but it does teach the kids that it isn't always effort that makes it makes you successful. You know, I mean, things are going to get bad breaks against you. You got to be able to figure a way to turn them around and make them positive. Those last two plays, uh, Greg Thielen had nine yards on that, and then Aaron Backer came back with 14. Sure, and I'm talking over the plays. Well, no, that's fine. But, uh, you know, these kids are giving us some pretty good efforts right in there uh, uh, from it. Uh, again, this was a third and five play right there, and uh, uh, we were able to break the pass up. We come right back, uh, check to uh, Crutchfield for nine yards. Uh, Ron Henderson uh, will carry on this next play for five. Okay. And I tell you, they're, defensively, they're, they're playing very, uh, you know, confident, aggressive right now. And, and you get a lead, uh, uh, you know, you can turn, turn things loose. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, from this. It's a lot easier to play defense when you're up three touchdowns. Right. There's a, a pass from Paul Check to uh, uh, Paul Ballmer from uh, the old Skyler connection there from high school days. And uh, uh, Again, I thought uh, Ballmer played real well for us. There's Chris Bantner again. Uh, you know, he, he's still playing hard out there. And uh, That's nice about Chris. He stepped in when Larry Sibley had to give up football and uh, I don't know if we've uh, missed a step. He's been playing very hard. There's uh, Jeff Roethlisberger putting some heat on the quarterback and, and they have another incompleted pass uh, from that. That was on a, on a third and ten. And there's Paul Storbeck uh, putting heat on the quarterback. Again, uh, uh, you know, looking at the films, uh, I think uh, our front uh, line probably put as much heat on him as anybody all year. And they get a field goal uh, uh, again out of this one. So you give up three points. Final score is 34-14. And you know, you say it, it does, it, it's not something that you say when you lose a ball game. Uh, I've seen teams win ball games and, and talk to them afterwards and, and, and tell them they played well enough to win the game. They just didn't win it. Taking a look at the final stats, you're down a little bit in total yardage, but, but uh, you know, you held them to 254 yards, and they went in with a real, real powerful offense. Well, you know, we, we felt, uh, you know, they've been running the ball, and we had to stop the run, and they 61 got 61 yards, yards on 38 uh, uh, attempts. You know, I guess the fact is, you know, kids, kids are playing hard now. We've got to coach them better, and, and sometimes got to play smarter, and just, just to make some plays. And some of the plays we're not making right now are, are probably confidence plays. Uh, uh, back there, you know, you, you've got to be able to play loose to, to make some of the plays. And I, I think right now, uh, when you're frustrated and, and, and things like that, sometimes it's tough to pull those plays off. So let's take a look at the scores around the conference now. Uh, again, you know, I think most of them held true to uh, what everybody thought. North Dakota State uh, is playing awful well right now. 
Uh, I think they're on sort of that get even mode right now. Uh, they got beat by St. Cloud, tied by Augie, and uh, they put it to them pretty good. Now they got to play us this next week. Uh, Mankato State, uh, again, they're a, I think they're one of the better teams in the league. Uh, you know, how they lose a couple games is always uh, beyond me. North Dakota's playing very well. Uh, St. Cloud, uh, uh, I'm sure, has got a lot of question marks in there. And they've had a lot of injuries uh, also this year. Morningside, uh, uh, you know, obviously wanted to get back. Uh, Talk about payback. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> It's 67 to 20. As we look at this uh, standings, there's North Dakota State once again. Everybody thought they would be there this this season, seven and 0 and eight and 0 overall. North Dakota, maybe a little bit of a surprise at six and one in the conference, uh, and then it really drops down to four and three, three four. Yeah, I will tell you, uh, you know, Augie, uh, St. Cloud, Northern Colorado, good teams. There again, you got Mankato, who I think might be one of the, the top two or three teams in our league, uh, sitting there at four and three right now. Morningside, uh, you know, bounce back with a victory. South Dakota has been playing a little bit better and then us in South Dakota State right now. Uh, you know, just looking at it, I think South Dakota State's had a lot of injuries uh, during the year uh, from it also. But, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, what it's showing is probably you got a couple, uh, at least one very outstanding team in our league and, and the rest of them, uh, uh, things stay away from injuries and playing good ball, uh, you know, are pretty good teams. Time to take a look at the Players of the Week. First on defense. Young man that came in for Larry Sibley when Larry got hurt, starting at linebacker Chris Bantner had a great game for you. I tell you, Chris has come in. Uh, the, the whole year was uh, was a tough year, I think, to start with for him. You get a transfer that you know coaches don't know that much about him. Uh, he's learning a new system, uh, but he's a kid that loves to play football. Uh, you know, has taken great advantage of the opportunities. He's got been a great specialty team player for us, and uh, you know has come in the last two weeks now and played. Uh, uh, excellent football for us and, and just plays it at a, at a very high level and, and very enthusiastic and I think does a good job of, uh, of raising the level of the players uh, around him out there. On offense, a young man has had a frustrating season. You know, you, things go wrong with the offense. Everybody blames the quarterback, but, but Paul Check has, has tried so hard this year and it's, it's really unfair to, to pile whatever uh, disappointments the team has had on him. Obviously, it is not all his fault. Right, it, it's tough. But I, I thought Paul came back this week against Northern Colorado and and uh, did some things, uh, you know, very well, fundamentally well. Threw the ball probably as well as he's thrown it all year. Made some good audibles out there. Uh, you know, I think he did the things uh, necessary for us to uh, to win a game and, and to move the football uh, from it. So you know, we've just got to get him in, in the groove, and, and then we've got to get everybody else elevated around him. We hear a lot about weightlifting in college football. In this week's feature, we're going to find out how linebacker Kirk Coleman has approached this important aspect of training. And we asked Scott Grogan how he feels weight training can help an athlete. Hopefully it allows the, the players to become obviously a little bit bigger if possible and, and from a strength standpoint, obviously in, th in this day and age, uh, uh, strength is very, very important. Um, you know, weight training the last uh, 15 years or so has become very important also in developing speed and, uh, uh, you know, s the combination of strength and speed are very beneficial uh, in, the, uh, in this day and age for, for athletes of all ages, uh, especially at the college level. I think as the years come, I, I developed to like lifting and it just became habit where I just got so used to just lifting. It was, it was not, a, as some people will say, a, as a, a lecture, you know, like you have to. I, I wanted to, you know, something I wanted to do. From an injury standpoint, uh, a good strength training program should help prevent a lot of, of uh, the shoulder injuries and, and uh, back injuries and things like that. Our trainers uh, do a great job of, of using uh, weights as a uh, rehabilitative method for different types of injuries. If I was to come in here without ever lifting that, it would hurt me a lot for the simple fact of first my size and second I think it, it would go for the wear and tear because I think lifting helps as far as keeping your body toned where you could take hits. When you when you have a weight training program, it has to be a year-round type of thing. You expect the the athletes to get on uh, some type of a weight training program, uh, both uh, pre-season, uh, in-season, and an off-season uh, program. An in-season program is going to be set up so that the um, 
players who are on the varsity, they're going to be doing the playing and those kind of things. Uh, they will end up doing more of a repetition type of thing, trying to maintain the level that they're at. Whereas your young players, the freshmen and red shirts and things like that, you hope to get them on a program where they will uh, continue to in make increases. Uh, then the off-season program, you work, uh, build up from working with lighter weights, doing a lot of repetitions to work and working your way through the uh, off-season program to the last part where you're doing uh, heavier weights with less repetitions, trying to develop, first you try to develop the endurance and, and, and some of the strength and then, then the, toward the end you're working strictly from a strength standpoint. Uh, Preseason workout, you, again, is, is something that's very specific for the things that, that you want to do. You're going to try to continue to build on the strength that you've gained in your off-season program and along with that work with the endurance aspect so that when they come in in the season they've got good strength and endurance to be able to make it through the practices in August when they come in. Well, lifting they say slows you down but there's extra things to lift in it, like uh, the rope, jumping rope, running, doing a lot of stuff that's uh, aerobic and stuff. It helps you out. The players are going to be pumped up this weekend when you travel to North Dakota State to play the number one team in the nation. You don't have to do any talking to the players this week to tell them how important this ball game is to them as individuals, not obviously to the to the standings in the league or anything, although you have a chance to knock off the number one team. But this is this is the way you want to wind up a season with a win against North Dakota State and then beat South Dakota State too. Right. I think it's it's a great opportunity for some of our young kids also to you know find out the the type of intensity and the, the level that you have to play against a, a number one uh, ranked football team and a program like uh, uh, North Dakota State that's been traditionally good for for many years. Uh, from it and and I think uh, again you know uh, somebody will say well you know they're going to not be looking at UNO or something like that uh, I think the thing is that they remembered is they got uh, they got embarrassed last year I mean it was we we beat them in the past uh, some of those games were sort of shames that we beat them because I, I don't think we were maybe quite as good and we pulled some things off and, and so on last year uh, they just got flat uh, beat and uh, I'm sure they're reminding their uh, kids of that. And uh, I think they have a lot of pride up there. The, the kids, I'm sure, didn't enjoy that. But, but our people will be ready to play them. They, they enjoy playing North Coast State. Have you figured out, we got just about a half a minute left, have you figured out what the key is, why you guys have had more success against them in the last decade than anybody on earth? I don't know. I, I do know as, as a coach, uh, you know, sometimes the, the kids can, can sense games that, that you really enjoy. Uh, I know the Rocky up there, their coach, uh, maybe you coach harder against people. Uh, I know last year uh, uh, it was probably one of the more thorough preparations for a game that than we've been through uh, both sides of the ball. And I think the kids uh, sense those types of things. And, uh, you know, when some good things happen to you early in the game, uh, it, it just starts to build. I think UNO has a great game in them this year. I don't. I hope they haven't already played it. I think if you know you eliminate some of the mistakes and and get the kind of effort you're looking for from the kids, you can beat North Dakota State. And I hope you do. I hope we come back next week and have a lot to talk about. Well, thank you, Dave. We'll get after them. Thanks, Tommy. And thank you very much for watching Maverick Football 1990 for Tom Mueller. This is Dave Weber. We'll see you next week. Maverick Football 90 is provided in part by Cox Cable Omaha who, in recognition of the importance of education, is pleased to help support the Knowledge Network of Greater Omaha. Pepperoni's Pizza, serving sandwiches, pizza, pasta, and a fresh salad bar to satisfied customers. Nebraskans for Public Television. And Wimmers of West Point, serving the Midwest since 1934 with quality meat products made right here in Nebraska. Enjoy Nebraska Public Television's Saturday Double Feature, beginning tonight at 8, when Doris Day and David Niven star in Please Don't Eat the Daisies. Then at 9.55, Laurence Olivier and Vivian Lee star in That Hamilton Woman. All tonight, beginning at 8, on Nebraska Public Television.